Let's talk jackets. Have you been thinking about investing in a new coat and looking at the Patagonia Nanopuff or the Micropuff? We've got both and we're gonna go over the pros and cons of each. We purchased the Nanopuff nine years ago and we actually got the Micropuff just a year ago. To get it out of the way, would we buy these jackets again? 100%, but each would be for very specific purposes, which we will cover. Now let's go over these jackets. When you're actually looking at them, they seem very similar, but one thing you'll notice is the quilting pattern is different. The Nano Puff uses a horizontal quilting pattern, which keeps the insulation in place. I've washed this many times over the years, and I have not had any issues with the clumping of the insulation itself. If you look here, you can see the Micro Puff uses a minimal amount of stitches to hold the little insulation in place. This helps with the weight since less material is being used and it will make it warmer since there's less holes in the actual material. Both of these jackets use synthetic insulation, but two completely different kinds. The Nano Puff uses a Prima Loft, but unlike down when it gets wet, it's able to maintain its shape and will keep you warm still. The Micro Puff, on the other hand, uses Plumafil. Yep, not Primafil, Plumafil, which is lightweight insulation and it's structured more like down. It offers the warmth and packability of compressed down, but when it's wet, you're not going to have to worry about it being all plumped up. So what's all that mean? Well, they'll both keep you warm, but Plumafil will do it with less material, which means it's gonna be lighter weight. Since both these jackets are synthetic, they're gonna be a good choice if you're out in a wet climate. Are either of these perfect materials? Well, no they're still not as warm as down and can be expensive to produce. But they are good options if you're looking for an alternative to down. The outer shells of these jackets are noticeably different. The Nano Puff is still thicker and it seems more durable since it is made with 20D polyester ripstop, but it does have the DWR finish. Whereas the Micro Puff has a much thinner outer layer because it is 10D nylon ripstop. It's actually made from recycled fishing nets. We think one of the best things about Patagonia is they make quality gear and they back it up with their ironclad warranty. Unfortunately, I actually had to put this warranty to use and it was with the Nano Puff. We were camping and was standing around the campfire and a rogue spark flew up and unfortunately landed right on my sleeve and <laughs> burned a really nice big hole in it actually. We ended up going into a Patagonia store, said, hey, can I get this fixed? with my, I was a little bit embarrassed because it was a big hole, but I still wanted to wear the jacket. And she said, absolutely. And I actually gave it to them and they shipped it off to their guy. Yep, some guy, he, all he does is just fix these jackets. Well, fix all the Patagonia stuff. It was a real easy process. And within two, maybe three weeks, it was shipped back to me at no cost to myself. I actually don't remember even what sleeve it was. It was that good of a fix. Before I show you the pockets, let me show you the zippers. This is the one complaint I've heard of Patagonia is they have small zippers that like to get stuck. And if you compare the two sizes of the zippers here, you can see that the Nano Puff zipper is literally the shuttle part of the zippers twice as big as the one on the Micro Puff. I think they did everything on the Micro Puff to make it as small and light as possible which I like for backpacking. Over on the Nano Puff, they have slightly smaller zippers for the pockets. And honestly, I haven't found too many issues with actually zipping them back and forth. The Micro Puff, on the other hand, the zipper is almost covered, where if you look on the Nano Puff, it's, it's actually open. So when you zip it and unzip it, there's nothing to get stuck. But when you're doing that on the Micro Puff, there's just a, a higher chance of you trying to zip this extra material in there. It's not a huge deal, but it's, it's something that happens. On the Nano Puff, these side pockets, they're really big. The inside of the pocket goes all the way up to here and then all the way down to the very corner. So there's plenty of room for like, if you wanted to stick your hands with your gloves or just stick piles of stuff in there, you totally can. On the inside, there's no inner pocket here, but there is kind of a secret pocket up here. It's not super big. Well, actually it is, it is plenty big. It goes all the way here to here. So I normally stick my phone in here. This is kind of like my dedicated phone pocket. The way I like it is because when this is zipped up, there's no chance of anybody getting into that pocket and there's really hardly any chance of anything falling out of that pocket. So those are your only three pockets on the Nano Puff. On the Micro Puff, the pockets are definitely higher up to start with. As far as how big they are, it goes from here 
all the way down to the bottom there, here to here. So they're, they're plenty big as well. They're not quite as deep this way. So it, my whole hand is in there, but it's barely just my whole hand in there. You could still fit a glove in there as well. The big difference on this one is they have these big drop pockets on the inside. And this is a good spot, like if you wanted to stick your gloves or if you had anything you wanted to keep warm, say you wanted to put your water filter in here, you could do that. And then when it's zipped up, it'll have your body heat to keep warm, won't freeze. And there's another one on this side. What they don't have is that little zippered pocket on here like the Nano Puff does. And so you just have your other single pocket on this side. One of the biggest differences between these two jackets is weight. And we're going to show you how they pack up. We're going to start with the Nano Puffs. And the unique thing about that is the Nano Puffs is the interior one, is its own stuff sack. So it stuffs right into it. I'm not going to lie, they're not the easiest thing to do because getting that last 20% in is kind of a pain. But we have stuffed these in here for years and haven't blown out any of the seams yet, so that's a bonus. And it's a pretty convenient little way to pack them in, especially if you're backpacking. It's in its own little stuff sack. But yeah, the nice thing is you don't have, you don't have to worry about losing the bag because there's no bag to lose. But it is, that little last bit to zip it up is hard. And then it has a little dangle on it. So if you wanted to hang it, you could. What size is yours? Yours is the medium? Mine is the women's large, actually. Yeah, that last little. <laughs> last little bit. Okay. And Greg, it has the uh, large men's. So you can see that it's definitely bigger, but it's not too much bigger. Yeah. So on the micro puff, you're using one of the side pockets and it's the one that has a little hook on it. That's how you know which one's the stuff sack. Which is the left pocket. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just recently learned that you could stuff it in. I, I didn't realize you could stuff it in and I was just pulling it up and stuffing it inside my hood. It's a race. I think I'm going to win. Yeah. <laughs> this one's a little bit harder to shove in. and I. It does have the hood. It is a little bit more material. So definitely not the easiest. I don't want to accidentally get the zipper caught on the fabric. So this is where those little tiny zippers yeah. kind of downfall. So. There. there. Whew, that was a challenge. <laughs> it's hard. Definitely easier on the Nano Puff. Yes, much easier on the Nano Puff. And truth be told, we don't do this. <laughs> yeah. uh, these are so compressible when I throw it in my pack, what I'll do is I'll throw my sleeping bag in the bottom and then I'll just shove this thing down on the sides because it just, well, you get, the idea. you get the idea. <laughs> I'm not gonna go through the process. So it's considerably, it's actually bigger. Of course, this is the hooded version. This one isn't. Without the weight. As you can see there, it's, it's a little fatter. Okay, so the men's micro puff. Large is 12 ounces. So an ounce, almost two ounces lighter than the pattern. And the Nano Puff is 13.6. No. So 1.6 ounces heavier. Yeah. Let's see what the woman's. Let's see. Which is quite a bit because this one has a whole hood and this one doesn't. Yeah. So the women's large is only 9.8 ounces. And Compared the Nano. To 12. 12. Which That's is quite a bit big difference. A huge and difference. this has a uh, hood. And they're both women's large. If you're looking for weight primarily, Micro Puff, the way to go. So how warm are these jackets? Technically, I think the Micro Puff is supposed to be warmer. Honestly, I think it's about dead even just wearing them. Yes, yeah, yeah I can't really tell much difference. Except for with the hood, you know, of course that helps keep in the heat. Yes, so. that's the biggest difference. If you're getting one of these jackets and you're looking to be warm, 100% get the hood. The hood makes all the difference. It really does. It really holds in everything. Even if it looks funny. Yeah, we'll show you the hood <laughs> in a second. It, it's not going to win an award, but it keeps you warm. Yes. They're super quick to pull out. That's actually pretty nice. Yes. <laughs> Although I'm going to have to say the, the size of the Micro Puff is horribly undersized. 
even the the hole to put the jacket in is smaller so it actually makes it even harder to get out on hooded jackets there's that little trick that you can kind of roll your jacket up and stuff everything inside of the hood and it kind of creates a nice little pouch yeah which, which is what i do so truth be told i find the nano puff to be a little bit clammy and what's that mean exactly? Um, I don't think this this breeze is good as uh -oh. the micro puff. So when I wear this and it's on that temperature variance where it's maybe I shouldn't have a coat on, maybe I should. I find that this just I don't know makes me feel clammy. <laughs> Haven't had the problem with the micro puff at all. It and is a lighter weight, so it does. Seem it, light. I, it, it does breathe a lot better. They say that this is windproof as well. I can't say that I've found that to be true. I wouldn't rely on this as your windbreaker. Definitely have a rain shell to work with. I actually do not find it clammy. I don't exactly know what that means, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like the nail buff. You know it if you felt it. Yes. I okay, so that. which coat would you grab if you were headed out and wanted to be the warmest? I would go with the micro puff. I would too. It, it has much more loft than the nano puff. It just feels a little bit warmer. Yeah. As you can see, the women's cut does have a bit of a taper on the side. This is the nano puff and it has just a slight taper as well. And actually you can see right here that this yeah. line cuts in. Mine doesn't do that. Let's look at the differences between the nano puffs. I find that the women's nano puff is not as fit as. Yeah, you can tell it doesn't. I'll suck into the quite, side near yeah. as much and this is pretty straight what i do like which i didn't show even though this doesn't have a hood it has this collar mm -hmm. and if you're cold when you zip it up it it sucks in and, and blocks everything yeah. from the coldness from going down and so that is super helpful the nylon puff comes down and it almost covers my whole butt as well it comes down pretty far one nice thing about that is if you're wearing a pack it actually comes far enough down where it doesn't get stuck in that little spot where it wants to ride up and constantly <laughs> ride up and when you're wearing your pack and yeah, hot mess. Now, admittedly this, I probably could get away with a medium and I ordered the large primarily because I have the nano puff large. I find this to be a little, it fits a little bigger, but I also wear two layers underneath this. I have my base layer and then my R1. When I have everything on, I don't really find it to be too big. One of the questions we've seen online is, can you access the pocket of the micro puff when you have a pack on? So let's try it. I can't say that I've ever actually hiked with this on. Usually this is when I'm at camp. So there you go. The bottom of the pocket actually starts above where my belt goes. So. so both of these jackets can come with a hood. We don't have a hooded nano puff, so we can't show you that. But they're also, that hood is meant to go underneath the helmet. So say you're rock climbing or biking, the helmet actually yeah. goes on top. It's more of a snug fitting hood. But these also have a, a little bit of a funny shape to them. <laughs> they and... totally have a funny shape to them. <laughs> we'll have Kelly show you. And the, the, the trick about this hood also is you can't zip your coat all the way up until after you have your hood on. Yeah. Oh, here it goes. <laughs> it's very snug. So you can see here that like the face hole layer, I mean, it, it literally encompasses your yeah. whole head, which is super nice if you get really cold because there's, I mean, you're really snugged in there. And if you turn to the side, you kind of have this little cone thing on the top there. And if you turn all the way around, I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not super flattering. I find though that when I have this hood on, I do have a harder time hearing because my ears are completely covered. When would you wear these jackets and in what scenario? So for everyday use, which jacket do you pick up? Definitely the Nano Puff. This is my go-to jacket. And why? Um, it's easy, lightweight. So for me- And it's durable. I don't feel yes. like I'm gonna destroy this jacket. Th that's the primary reason why I pick yes. this one every single time. Love this one, but I won't even throw this in the back seat of my car because I'm scared that it'll catch on something. Now, if you were hiking, which would you pick? Hiking, I would go with the Micro Puff just because it is lighter weight, easily can compact it and shove it in my pack if I don't need to wear it, and I can layer with it easily. I've actually worn my nano puff underneath my uh, micro puff at the coast. So if you were backpacking versus hiking, you'd take the same one? I take the uh, micro puff every time. 
hiking and this is where we differ i if i was hiking i would just take unless it was going to be super cold if it was going to be mild i would take the ah, nano well pod. i guess i was thinking of and part partially because when i'm putting my jet one my pack on and off yeah you know, you'd have to worry about durability if i'm going to chuck this on the ground i'm going to stuff this in my bag i don't have to worry about it now if i'm backpacking 100 percent this thing is coming with me this thing I mean, just stuffs down, even though it was impossible to get inside of its own little <laughs> stuff sack, it actually compresses really well. And it works well for an extra added pillow. This Trekology pillow, it's not super soft, and I'll ball this thing up kind of like this, and then shove that under my head at night, and that actually works really well. I guess maybe if I was day hiking and not, and it wasn't cold, I could, I would take my Nano Puff too. I love my Nano Puff. Don't get me wrong, yeah, these have been our all-time favorites, considering we bought them in... Um, well, we've had them nine years, so, yeah. yeah. Now, let's talk about the downsides of these jackets. Every, not, nothing is perfect, and these definitely have some downsides. What are yours for the Nano Puff? Mine for the Nano Puff is the little strings that keep on coming out. They... <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've had to trim little strings. I don't know why, but they just come out all the time. And I also find that when I'm wearing this, and I'm like, like say driving in my car, I have to zip my zippers up or else I keep hitting, hitting each time. It drives me crazy. Yeah, well, that, those zippers will pull the threads out. <laughs> yes. The good thing is, is even though a lot of them pull out, I, I don't think yeah. I've had a single one of these Section open up, up or anything like mm -hmm. that, so. And actually, when I had my Nanopuff fixed, when they sent it back, they had trimmed up all those little extra strings that were popped up. Micropuff. And maybe that's why they, yeah. on the Micropuff, it's kind of covered. Yeah, it's tucked in. As far as the Micropuff, what we don't like or what we found as a con, to me, is the lack of availability. I don't know why. <laughs> REI has a huge, huge amount of stores in our area, and they had exactly zero. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I called all of them because I just wanted to be able to put it on to see Try what it. size to order mm -hmm. and just had no idea. There also is a, there's just not a lot of variety of colors yeah. as well. When you're looking at the Nano Puffs, there's they have a, a vest Nano Puff. They've got yeah. the regular jacket Nano Puff and then they've got the hooded version. They've got like 60,000 colors. And then every <laughs> season you get all sorts of new colors. I think the downside for the Micro Puff for me is I just feel like I have to be a little bit more gentler with it. I feel that the material is just a little bit more delicate. Now let's talk about cost. These jackets are extremely expensive. Let's just get yeah. that out of the way. They're definitely not a budget jacket, but as you can see, they last, well, they last a long time. We've had these forever. Also, Patagonia, for whatever reason, has an extremely good resale value. My mm -hmm. first jacket was a red one that I got for half price because we like to grab all the sales. Yes. I wore it for, I don't know, four Couple or five years, at yeah. least four or five years. And then I resold it on eBay for, I think, $3 less than I paid for it originally. They hold their value if you take care of them. And also on that side note, if you're looking for a jacket and you don't want to pay full price, there's a lot of options. Wait till the season yes. flips and they will get rid of the colors they don't like. You may not get to choose your color, but you're going to get potentially half off. Mm -hmm. I did end up getting this one from the Warnware site. So Patagonia has their own used resale site that you can go to. The cool thing about that is you don't have to worry about counterfeits. That's yeah. a little bit sketchiness <laughs> about eBay. So getting it from the Warnware site, you actually know you're getting yeah, a real from jacket. Pat yeah, and, it's from Patagonia. Yes. And we'll put the link to the video up here. It's it's actually a pretty easy process. That actually was really easy. And they categorize it on the quality and everything. And this thing was, honest to God, it, I, it must have never have been worn because there's zero things wrong with it. Yeah. And I got a good deal on it. So if you're looking for a good synthetic jacket, these are two really good options from Patagonia. The Nano Puff, you can't go wrong with the Nano Puff. And you really can't go wrong with the Micro Puff if you can take care of it. We can highly recommend these jackets. Go watch this video next. You can find us at ExploreTrekAdventure.com and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.